In this video, we're going to show you how to uh, populate a request that uses C data, and we're going to use this uh, use the set property value uh, uh, instruction in SOAP UI. Uh, so let's take a look at what we have here. This this script will read a Excel data sheet, uh, populate a request, send the request. Uh, it'll look at the response and compare it with expected results in the Excel data sheet. So my uh, um, test case just has two group, uh, two test steps: a Groovy script test step and a and a re request response test step. So it's fairly simple and compact. So we have the JXL libraries. That's uh, what allows us to read the uh, spreadsheet. Uh, only uh, XLS dot XLS uh, file type. It will not read the newer .xlsx. You need Apache POI for that. Uh, we re get the sheet and we iterate through. So I'm starting my row count. Start at row two because uh, number one, the the everything here starts with a, a row and column of zero. So my first two rows contain header information. So row zero and row one, I don't. I want to ignore because the data doesn't start until row two. Uh, if you, you'll probably be debugging as you go along doing stuff, so you'll want to you find that log info is very, very helpful to you. I originally was going to also loop through the columns, but I couldn't figure out how to populate the request and response uh, with a variable. So I and just uh, took each each one of the variables that I'm going to send, and there's nine of them. So I've listed them off here. They're pretty much all the same format. Uh, so if we look at Parm one, uh, it just it gets the data uh, from this cell. I think it gets an internal uh, kind of like index number, and then it gets the contents of it, and the value of that goes into cell contents. Then that's converted over into string into a variable parm1, up all uppercase. Then we here's where we set the property value, and we do this so we can use this property value in the request and response. So we feed parm1, which matches up with this, the cell contents here, into a property value, which is uh, essentially... Uh, another variable called parm1 lowercase so there is a difference and if we go over to the, our uh, request you'll notice that parm1 in lowercase we have it here and this is coming from the test case level and here's our c data so we have the c data just like hard coded there and then our variable so let's go back here so i read in nine uh, parameters from my excel spreadsheet and I also have two expected results in my Excel spreadsheet. And so I made those in uh, uh, columns 12 and 13. So because we have zero, we're going to read column 11 and then the row. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set the property value. And the success results either going to be true or false. And if it's false, then we also get an expected error message. Now, if you notice, they, these are not listed in the uh, request because we're not requesting that. What we're going to do is we're going to, if you open up the assertion button here, here's a success result, which is a contains. And here's the all caps success result. And if we look over here, okay, won't let me do that. If we look over here, all caps success result. So it reads the success result from the sheet and then sticks it in here. So I, it's kind of reversed here, the uh, upper and lower case, but uh, that's just me. <laughs> and then uh, same thing, if we look at our assertions, the fault message, it, it grabs the variable from our test at the test case level and it's looking for expected error message. Let's close this, go over to the code, and here's the expected error message. So then after that, it uh, actually sends the request off, comes back uh, with the response, and then it gets the next um, row. 
Now, unfortunately, I will not be able to run this for you and show it working uh, because this was written for a client and uses a private web service that you need to authenticate to and all that. So I've obfuscated all the information. That's why it has like Parm 1, Parm 2 and all that. And it's got, you know, fake 1, fake 2. But um, if anyone ever finds a uh, public web service that uses C data, uh, just uh, let me know and I will code this up to make sure that it works on the uh, public uh, web service. It's always nice to see these things in action. So this will hopefully solve any C data problems you have.